that time you have influence in different quarters god will demand it if you want to come deeper the path is narrow i have to chisel you that's what they call a living sacrifice every tendency within you that the devil can leech upon to make you a slave he will cut it off every kind of lust everything that is of flesh will be decimated it's a journey of god gotta you will become bones to go forward he will burn off and decimate every flesh from within you for you to be able to journey because every part of you that flesh can still find expression is a gate for another spirit to enter you know the devil the devil has many many strategies when the devil realizes that you have made god your all he may not come to tell you to leave god he will want to be part of it that is babylon corruption and because god doesn't want to give room to babylon he will decimate the flesh hope you know when he came to jesus he wasn't against his fasting and prayers see god with all your heart i'm not I have a problem with it but i want to have a harvest so that in the day of your manifestation the devil will have a harvest when god wants to reveal you to your word there will be anger and through that anger the devil will raise the harvest there will be bitterness through that bitterness the devil will raise the harvest there will be insecurity because of insecurity malice backbiting will come in and the great thing god wants to do the devil will have a harvest because of that insecurity god wants to empower you and you say no we have to leave a legacy for our children because this thing something has to be on ground and instead of building god's kingdom you start building babel all of those tendencies are pathways in the flesh god will not let you go forward until he kills it that's why the first sacrifice of a priest in the new testament is the presenting of your body as a living sacrifice and he called it a living sacrifice because it won't kill you first you will be alive while he's cutting it off he will be cutting it off it's like the flight of the eagle when the eagle matures and he wants to take off his wings he will dive into the ocean and as he crashes with the ocean the feathers will scatter the ones that don't remove the eagle will use its beak and pull it out with blood it's a kind of death but you are alive when you are murdered he will tissue you so that we remember those cars and the day will come when those cars will become your rank in the kingdom it's a journey of priesthood you can't pass, pass this journey until god has become your obsession that's why paul said i beat my body i bring it under subjection sometimes you pass through the fire the lord puts his hand on you it is heavy but you can't run away you are crying but you are dying and you will be there for many seasons many seasons until you come to a point where you have mastered how to abound and to abase like paul you say we are the circumcision that rejoices in christ jesus having no confidence in the flesh it's a journey of intimacy it's not a bible verse for you to quote it's an experience that you must have it's an experience that you must have we are the circumcision we worship god in the spirit we rejoice only in christ jesus we don't rejoice in an anointing we don't rejoice in the manifestation we don't rejoice in a team we rejoice only in christ jesus and because we have no confidence in the flesh anymore christ has become our all that's the first sacrifice of a priest all of that is still happening at the altar of sacrifice you have not begun to journey you are just at the first phase of the journey the second sacrifice of a priest is in hebrews 7 24 and 25 they said jesus even after he ascended he continually brings the sacrifice of intercession is a is a body the sacrifice of prayer that a point will come when everything that comes out of you are the oracles of god they are the oracles you don't know how to say anything anymore but prayer you will your prayers will ascend they said the prayers of the saints they ascend to heaven as others and they are stored up in golden fire i'm showing you why the value and the rank of our generation in the realm of god is reducing the reason is because we pursue vanity in the days of the apostle if 12 men gather they can take a city but in our generation even if a thousand churches are in a territory they can't take it the bible said this be the man that turned their world upside down they were talking about paul and barnabas two men enter a city they turn it upside down the bible said philip went to samaria he preached christ there the city was full of joy one man had the stature to take a city if you know the number of churches that are in lagos you begin to weep when you compare it with the corruption on the street from monday to saturday 
you will wonder whether their church is here. The reason is because our church now is a church of number, not a church of citizens. We don't have kingdom citizens because kingdom citizens are priests. Our church is a church of number, not a church of citizens. In the days of the apostles, sometimes a whole city just gather in a family and four men in one family can bring that city under the government of God. How come we are many but there is no rank? It's because our priorities are wrong. I tell you, if we say we will lock this door now and pray to tomorrow, many will faint. Because there's no priesthood. We know how to sleep because we live for pleasure. And in 1 Timothy 5, 6, he said, him that liveth for pleasure is dead even while he's walking. We want to restore the journey of intimacy. We will teach men the language of prayer. We will pray or the prayer will become an, our essence. And as you journey deep in the path of prayer, and I'm telling you already, that is not, Lord, give me money. Lord, give me promotion. That is at the gate. It's children that pray like that. Because actually when you mature, you don't even pray for job. You command it. Everything you need is at the mercy of a decree. But when you begin the journey of prayer, prayer for you is about transformation. It's about transfiguration. It's about transubstantiation. That's why when Jesus was teaching them prayer below the mountain, he said, when you pray, see our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. He was talking to crowd. When you talk to crowd, what they have is needs. But when he carried the three disciples to the mountain top, the kind of prayer he taught them was different. He said, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment began to blister. The prayer children pray is, Lord, give me things. But the prayer the mature pray is transformation. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his suffering. That kind of prayer is a travail. That's the kind of prayer that he was praying in Gethsemane. And he prayed until his sweat became like blood. It's not a prayer of I'm taking something. I want to prevail. I want to go through this. If it is thy will, let this cup pass me by. Yet not my will, but thine. It's a prayer of transiting from your will to his will. It's a prayer of migration, transfiguration. From one level to another level. It is an advancement in immortality. That kind of prayer is not for babe. It's a price that priests pay. And so sometimes you lie on your bed. And as you are praying, you hit a point in the spirit where you only begin to travel. And you are weeping and you are crying. There are no words anymore. The burdens of the Lord, the deaths of the Lord, the marks of the Lord, the pains and the sufferings of God come upon you like a canopy. And in the place of prayer, you are only suffering with Christ. And you are weeping and men don't understand what is going on. That is a prayer of priesthood. It's a sacrifice. But I tell you, many believers have never reached there. It's a journey of intimacy. That's why Paul said, the highest peak of the knowledge of God is not revelation. It is the fellowship of his suffering. In the journey of the knowing or the knowledge of God, you begin with revelation that I may know him. And then you know the power of his resurrection. But for you to truly have the experience, you must have the fellowship of his suffering. The price and the, the sacrifice of a priest in prayer is to participate in the fellowship of his suffering. A time comes when you pray until the burdens of God rest upon you. You literally lose your breath. For those who have journeyed, they know what I'm saying. You will literally be gasping for air because the weight will be much. You will want to suffocate. And many times you beg him to help you. To help you. To help you. Sometimes you pray and the pains that men are feeling in other nations, God will put it on you. The terror you begin to literally sense the terror that God feels when his children are in pain. And you don't know what is going on. It is the fellowship of his suffering. These are the prices we pay at the altar of sacrifice. All of that is to attain unto intimacy. And when you pay this price,